Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you the Navigation Suite Scaffold, which is an amazing layout that lets us implement the different types of navigation related composables in Material 3 while considering all different screen sizes out there. So what does that mean in detail? I've opened the sample app that we will build here where you can see I have a bottom bar with certain screens we can navigate between. That is maybe nothing new to you at this point, but very often when we actually are on different screen sizes, for example, on tablet devices, we often don't want to use a bottom bar because then it just becomes too large. It's it's not a good UX. So on tablet, what Google recommends is to use a navigation rail instead. What is that? If we take a look here on tablets, a navigation rail is just something like a bottom bar that displays on the left side of our screen where we can also navigate between these two screens or three in this case. However, very often you also have navigation drawers, which are actually also just used to navigate between different types of uh, destinations in this case. That's why it's called navigation draw. Navigation drawers are usually just useful on very large screens. So on either tablet in landscape mode or on desktop screens. So if we rotate our tablet device here, you will see this new layout also automatically adapts to this new uh, layout with class, which will then show our navigation drawer in here, where we can then easily navigate between destinations. And all this behavior that decides which specific navigation composable is shown, so navigation drawer, navigation rail, or navigation bottom bar, that is abstracted away from us from this navigation suite scaffold. So let's see how we can implement this here in an empty Arrow Studio project. The only thing that I've already added is the dependency for this library that comes from Google. So it comes from the adaptive navigation suite library, and we also need the adaptive navigation uh, dependency in here. You can again copy and uh, paste this from my GitHub repository down below. Ideally, just replace this whole version catalog with my version catalog. And maybe if you've watched my previous video, then you also already know that I showed a different layout of this adaptive navigation library, which was for list and detail screens. So there are a bunch of different uh, layout types that this library actually makes much easier for um, different screen types. In this video, as I said, we will deal with uh, the, these typical navigation related composables in Material 3. Make sure you've added these dependencies here in your build.cradle file under your dependencies block. So these two you actually need. And also make sure that your compose compiler version is actually this one if you're using if you're using the uh, latest Kotlin version 1.9.23 at this point. After that, we can finally jump into coding. And it's actually not a lot of code that we have to write in order to make this work. So I am here in main activity. And as I already said, we need the navigation suite scaffold. This is now a composable we have access to. And the only thing we really need to specify is the list of items we want to display, because that is the only thing this layout really needs to know from us. Because no matter what kind of navigation related composable we use, whether we use a navigation draw, navigation rail, or a bottom bar, all these just display a set of items, which lead us to specific destinations. So this is the only real common logic that we need to add here. And we can do this by opening such a block of code, which gives us a navigation suite scope. And in here we can call item, which is a function that uh, this scope provides us here. And with item, we can specify a specific item type. So if the item is currently selected, what happens when we click on it, if there is an icon, which icon is it, the title and so on. So what I wanna do is, I want to define a little enum class here for our screens that tells us on the one hand the title and the icon in form of an image vector. And then in here we can specify the different screens. So on the one hand, let's have a home screen maybe that says, okay, uh, home. And the icon is icons default home. And then let's define two more destinations. On the one hand, maybe search. Oh, actually capitalized a uh, search like this search and we use the search icon and lastly we say we have a settings screen where we say okay the title is settings and the icon is settings and then inside this block here for these navigation suite items we can just take our enum class we say screen dot entries so we have a list of all of those different screens we defined in this enum class, and we just loop over it. So we say for each indexed, get an index and each screen reference. And here we can then just say we have an item, decide if it's selected or not. Well, when is it selected? An item is selected if this index of the item we're currently looping over 
is the same index as we have in our currently selected item index state. So we need some kind of state that keeps track of the currently selected item. So var, um, let's just have it selected item index, something like this. Make this by remember. And here we say mutable int state of. And initially our first item is selected, so index zero. Alt enter to import this remember function twice and then selected can be equal to index is equal to selected item index. Normally you would want to use this together with a um, nav host and nav controller to have real navigation also supporting back presses and so. But for the sake of this tutorial I really want to focus on this layout composable since the only thing that really changes with a nav host and nav controller is uh, that you would um, set the selected boolean here of each item equal to your nav controller and then you check if the currently visited route is equal to the route of that screen composable here. So then you would need to add a route parameter here to the screen and you could then check, okay, if current route is equal to screen.route, then um, the item is selected and otherwise it isn't. Let's also define an on-click lambda. What happens when we click on this item? Well, in that case, we just want to update our selected item index with the index we clicked on. Then we can define an icon, which we certainly have. Oops. Here we can just have an icon composable that takes in our image vector from that corresponding screen. So the image vector is just screen.icon and the content description can be our screen.title for example. And lastly, we want to define a label so the text that shows with such an item, which is just a text composable that displays our screen's title. And then in here, inside of the body of this navigation suite scaffold, so right here, you can open this we need to define the content. So in the end, our screen content. And this would also be the place where you would put your nav host with your real nav controller, which then makes sure to show the right destination for the right item. In our case, we will just use a box here with a modifier that fills the whole screen size. So modifier, fill max size, make sure to center its content. So we set a content alignment of center. And then in here, we can have a when expression. And depending on the selected item index, we want to show a different text. If it's zero, then our home item is selected. So we can show a text saying home. Duplicate that twice with command D. And here, if it's one, we want to show our search screen. And if it's two, we want to show our settings screen. And actually, we could also just loop over our enums here again, by the way. Um, so it's flexible for extending this. So we could just say uh, screen that entries for each index again get a reference to the index and the screen, and then we can display uh, screen.entries at the index of our current index, actually only if that's selected. So if selected item index is equal to our index, then we want to have a text composable in here that displays the current screen's title. Something like this should also work just fine. Remove this and I think then we are already ready to test this. So if we launch this on my phone and on my tablet, then you can already see that it displays our navigation rail in tablets. If we rotate this, then the navigation rail remains. If we take a look on our phone, then we can see our different items in our bottom bar. If we rotate this here, then we also keep the bottom bar. What doesn't work yet is that it shows the navigation draw because that's in fact optional and that's not the default behavior, but this scaffold allows us to still um, change this default behavior. So which specific navigation composable we want to show for which specific window class. So for which specific device type you can say. Now we can do this by first of all, getting a reference to the current window size class. So window class or window width class and that's equal to current window adaptive info dot window size class dot window width size class. So there are three different window size classes on the one hand compact, then we have medium and expanded. Compact is used for phones. Medium is used for, well, medium width of screens. Um, I think uh, the, the phone landscape also counts uh, under that. Not, not sure, too sure here. But then we also have expanded, which is mostly used for tablet landscape and desktop screens. And with this window width class, we can then easily decide, um, okay, if it's actually compact, please show this composable. If it's medium, show this and so on. So here in this scaffold, we can just go ahead and say we have our, what is it? The layout type. 
And if our um, window with class is actually equal to, oops, if that is equal to expanded, so if we are on a very wide screen, let's say we then want to show a nav controller uh, in a navigation drawer. So we say, uh, what is that? Navigation, scaf navigation suite scaffold navigation drawer. In all other cases, we want to show the default. So what the composable would have shown anyways for that specific window size class. So in that case, we can say navigation suite scaffold defaults and say, we want to calculate that from an adaptive info where we pass current window adaptive info. So then it will just calculate what it would do otherwise anyways. And if we relaunch this now on our tablet, then here in portrait mode, we do have our navigation rail. And if we rotate this, then we do get our navigation draw. Let's also try this on our phone. Right here, we do see our uh, bottom bar by default. And if we rotate this, then, oh, okay. Actually, it seems like <laughs> the phone landscape counts under expanded, which is quite weird. Um, but apparently, this is how Google wants this to work like. Of course, you could still also add a check if you're on a phone and then um, not show the navigation drawer if you don't want this and rather show a bottom bar here in landscape as well, which is what I would usually expect for a phone in landscape mode. Uh, but apparently, Google thinks that my Pixel 6 is in the expanded width size class. So I hope you enjoyed this. You will find all the code down below. And also, if you're looking for a little bit more advanced Android courses, then definitely check my website. You will find the link down below where you will find really long and really detailed Android courses that show you how to build really big and huge apps. And all that while considering a proper architecture, proper best practices, teaching you all those fundamentals you need to know in order to build solid apps. So click the link down below, check out these courses. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye.